Uh, Theodora Bishop's poetry and short stories have appeared in Glimmer Train, Prairie Schooner, Arts and Letters, and Short Fiction, among other journals, anthologies, and exhibits. A Pushcart Prize and Best New Poets nominee, Bishop was the winner of the Cupboards 2015 contest for her short story chapbook, Mother Tongues, judged by Matt Bell. Theodora holds an MFA from the University of Alabama and is pursuing her PhD in creative writing and literature here at UH. Her novella, On the Rocks, is forthcoming from Texas Review Press. Theodora. Thank you all for coming. Um, pigs. Kuszwica, Poland. The Russians expected to be greeted. Give us wine, give us meat, with wine, with meat. They barged in on my cousin's family, my Polish family in their Polish home, in their brown and broken Polish city. From behind the couch, my cousin listened to them poking through the black garden where on the ground, moldy peaches rolled in the rain. They ate the pig before it finished cooking. They lugged it into the room, swinging it by the hooves and grunting it over the fire. From the spit, the soldier cradled the body triumphant as Salome, its tongue a beige flap, the apple still corked in its mouth. My cousin Anna was a child when the pig was eaten, still soft, still trembling in her father's house while bullets rang into their walls. Now she clicks a flame to her cigarette as I ask if there were other pigs in the garden, seeing more swine and the guns and the wine I look to her for an answer, but she is coughing smoke. The woman reader. But of course the young lady should go, who should go down to governess would be in supreme authority. She would have on holidays to look after the small boy from the turn of the screw. To read the James novella was to be heavy headed, adrift on a boat made of glass. So much is always afloat, but just barely. Of the governess, the woman reader thinks, so clear she is childless. The woman reader has been dreaming of summer all winter. Now that it's here, she wants to roll up the surf and ring out the sky. Arizona or California or Texas or wherever it is she is could use the rain. Way back, on a date with a man who would not become her husband, the woman reader was informed that all this, this man's ex-wife wanted was to have her field plowed. Dinner was a disaster, the steam muscles toxic, still sealed in their shells, the face of the woman reader's company so sweaty she kept offering him water. Did the children's country estate with its dusty windows and will-o'-the-wisps have a field? What in the governess life could possibly need to be plowed? In the woman reader's imagination, the possible fields the governess walks equals plateau-like. The woman reader's daughter says, you said it, whenever what the woman reader says turns out to be wrong. You said it. What the government, governess should have said to the children had they lived up to their ghosts in the end. Outside, squirrels weave around tree trunks and branches trail yellow-green sheets. It can be ugly to be kind, the woman reader thinks. She thinks, innocence knows nothing but its own face. The woman reader posts a photo of herself reading on Facebook, captions the photo, just reading, shuts her screen and thinks, like. The woman reader's cat leaps into her lap. The woman reader's daughter doesn't like reading. Sometimes the one re woman reader's daughter watches movies next to the woman reader while the woman reader reads. In her daughter's favorite animation featuring the reedy voice of Mia Farrow, the Red Bull took it upon himself to chase all the unicorns into the sea. Flash forward the years and there is only one unicorn left and she is the last. When a magician transforms the last unicorn into a woman, and this woman carrying the voice of Mia Farrow, Farrow in her lungs frees her brethren. The unicorns come charging from the water, 
and the woman reader recognizes the governess among them. And the last poem I'm reading is called Ensemble. Ensemble. I was five and running errands with my mother. Kmart was the one-stop shop for you name it, and at that age, I refused to wear anything but a dress. As on Easter, I donned one shell pink, skirt tiered. I wore a straw bonnet with it, my Mary Jane shoes. Later, someone who saw a picture of me in that outfit said to my mother, it's too big, it doesn't fit her. At Kmart, I played lost in the labyrinth of aisles, was rewarded for my behavior with Kmart Cafe. Patty robed in American cheese, lettuce like a slimed doily I loved. When I married, the bouquet I carried then tossed was in memory of my grandmother, Rose. Laying her down, roses cast the ground, beauty that knows how to clothe a stone. Thank you.